Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. Nice. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Great News with Kevin and Mike. Yeah, it's an intro. The show's about to begin, bro. Yeah, so say hello to the happy goodbye to the blues, because Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. Yeah. Who's that character? That's my, like, Godsmack, Five Finger Death Punch, <laughs> Super Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, my first story of great news today is a North Charleston principal and a councilman who then got a job at Walmart. So he's three things. Okay. Principal, city councilman, got a job at Walmart. That they, man we right call there. call that a triple threat, yes. He, um, three nights a week, he's the high school principal. His name is Henry Darby. He heads to his local Walmart and he stocks shelves from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. Just in time to get back to school for the morning bell. Jeez Louise. He uh, didn't do the extra work for himself. Instead, his earnings go toward helping low-income students oh, and their families. Come on! Right? <laughs> How are we supposed to live in a world where this man exists? Seriously. He, um, he said, I decided to get another job because of the kids. They really need help. And part of the reason that he gives back to his community is because the people who helped him throughout his life growing up. Ugh. So he was bo born per poor and a lot of different people chipped in and made his life better. And so he can say, I can say, he says, I can say that people really helped me get to where I am today. And I wish those of us who are born of poverty and we had to struggle and we made it to at least lower middle class that we will look back and help others. That's beautiful, man. So he works three nights a week, and then as these stories sometimes go, a student noticed that he was doing this, asked him why. They did a GoFundMe. They were trying to raise $20,000 in a month, and they raised $43,000 in three days. <laughs> nice! <laughs> so that man is an amazing man, yeah. and that's great news. Big applause, man. And, and you know, just go... Uh, let, let, you know, lest we forget, however many news stories that come out about a teacher, you know, getting impregnated by her sixth grade student or the principal who, you know, is secretly like, you know, like pimping out. Did you his, say sixth grade? You know, I'm, <laughs> you, I'm saying like you only get oftentimes you get cherry picked the stories of certain occupations doing terrible. But things. you said sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade. Yeah, but, yeah. Checking. I'm, you know, just hypothetical. Right. That the reality is, is that the, most of the people who devote themselves to education are, are like this man here. Agreed. Um, so uh, I'm going to go back to this show, What Would You Do, that I didn't know existed. Uh, it's an ABC show. And part of me hates the show because it's essentially you're fucking with people. I mean, they're, they're yeah, it's creating a fake it's a setup, yeah. situations. But in doing so, oftentimes it can highlight the beauty of the human spirit. So check this out. You in the military? I was, ma'am. I spent the last few years overseas and uh, now I'm back home in good old USA. This man salutes his yeah, service like right away. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so your total is going to be 6716. Uh, it says your card was declined. You got any coupons the manager can come? I'm sorry. The military discount? No, we don't offer one. His first thought so is to help plan a strategic withdrawal of the pricier items. Uh, you might have to have that thing get too red, uh, maybe yeah. sauce. It's like probably what, four or four dollars a piece. Maybe I'll take off a couple of baby foods. Okay. But when our soldier suggests four. surrendering the baby food, he reaches for his wallet. Here, I'll do it for it. Sir. You don't have to. Yeah, that's okay. What was it? Five dollars. So, why are you being so kind? Well, I was about to say, I appreciate you being there. Go ahead, Time to meet the man with a helping hand. Do you have a lot of money to spare? Not really. <laughs> why do that? It's the kindness of your heart and what God wants. How will you get repaid? Some more down the line, it'll come back. Sort of paying it forward and it comes back to you? Yeah. Derek falls back in line at the checkout counter. It says your card was declined. Can your manager give me a, like a veteran's discount? Right away, this woman opens up her wallet. Here, 
just take his money and I'll make him. Ma'am, you don't have to do that. Honestly, you don't have to do that. I know I don't have to. If I didn't want to, I wouldn't. How's that? Can you stop Thank the video? You very much. Just one second. The other guy's like, you're going to have to put some stuff back. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to take the, but if you put four of those back. That, but, you know, you're right. You're totally right. <laughs> She's just like immediately like, I'll pay She for opens it. her wallet. But the man was interviewed after and he's like, he, he admitted he doesn't have much money of his own. So it, it's always proportionate to what you can give, right? Sure. Okay. But this lady, she She's said, better. She he said, ma'am, you don't have to do that. She said, if I didn't want to, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Shut up. Take my credit card. Let's go. So, I mean, it just, I, it, there's a, a couple other individuals that do the same thing. Uh, and they end up paying for this, uh, this veteran. And then, by the way, that actor is actually a veteran. So it, oh, wasn't, that's good. it wasn't even, uh, accidental false valor. Um, and, and it just goes to show that, you know, in, in certain situations, oftentimes people will disappoint you. If you've ever watched the Borat films, sure. uh, like when he wants to find the right gun to kill a Jew, a man was very happy to find sure. him the right gun. But sure. other times when people are put in these situations, these artificial situations, the human spirit uh, shines bright. And sometimes it's, they're not artificial. Sometimes it's just in life, you're yeah. behind somebody and you, you realize they could use your help and you just give them a little bit and it makes all the difference in the world. It's amazing. Let's talk the Super Bowl. Yes. There, there are limited amounts of fans being let it in. I think 22,000 are being let in. And uh, the commissioner of the NFL... Roger Goodell surprised the Sarasota Memorial Hospital on a Zoom call that was in progress. So 22,000 fans will be let in. 7,500 will be vaccinated healthcare workers. You get free tickets. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh Sorry for crashing your meetings. I wanted to tell you that we want your team to be there. So if you're able to swing it, I want to Thank you, Roger. invite each member of your team to be our guest at the Super Bowl. Oh, I don't know if that means you accept or not. Yes, 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 yes. We accept. Oh my God. says he has a, a personal connection. I am the son of a nurse, um, and it, all of you have a very special place in my heart. Uh, I've seen the work that you do. My mom used to talk about it all the time. It's just extraordinary work. All 32 teams get to pick somebody from their city uh, and let them into the Super Bowl. How amazing is that? That is amazing. Now, can you, uh, Sully, is it possible to rewind to the beginning? Because I don't think one of those guys is there. You know, on Zoom, how you yeah. put a picture it's up? A, it's, a, it's a mannequin? Yeah, it's a mannequin. The guy is like someplace else playing video games, and he doesn't respond. <laughs> he doesn't respond ever. He's totally looking at you porn on his yes. phone. Yes, yeah. Roger Goodell's on the call. Let's go. Okay, let's All see. Right, uh, bottom left, Dylan... Hornberger. Watch him. So, if you're able to swing it, oh yeah. I want to Thank you, Roger. invite each member of your team <laughs> to be our guest at the Super Bowl. He was like having like a like a seizure. I Look don't at him again. You accept or not? Yes. Yes, yes. Look yes. at him. Hey, dude. Okay, either he, he's not going to the Super Bowl. Either he hates football. That could be. Or he's having like a like he's in a fugue state cuz that's no, he put a picture up. You know how you can do that. It looks I know like you could see him slightly moving and blinking and stuff. Either, or maybe he has the money for a hologram. But <laughs> I, that, like, honestly, like, like put that kid in a cell. Agreed. I, that's, there was an evil to that glare. And Agreed. he did not even move. But, not even a little bit. Great story. How about that? Nonetheless. And by the way, I'm a uh, son of a nurse as well. Are you really? Yes. I didn't know that. My mom is a nurse uh, in charge of a whole hospital, and it's it's amazing work that all that all those nurses. RNs, do. RNs are are real heroes. Yes, um, agreed. and uh, that it's it's really unspeakable the amounts of work that they do, and it's a little bit poopy that oftentimes MDs get all the credit, and and uh, doctors themselves will be the first to admit they're like. I'd be nothing, you know, without, without my RNs. So yeah, you're right. My, my wife, a, um, uh, her mom was a, 
an RN, my mother-in-law. Um, John Stewart, you had many run-ins with him uh, with your history in Kevin and Bean, right? Yes. I mean, John Stewart came on the show a bunch. One of the nicer celebrities, right? Yes. Truly caring, nice person, easy to be around, just a, a good dude. And I think he really displayed that to the world when he, for no real reason whatsoever, went to Congress to speak about the 9-11 first responders. And he, w he gave such an impassioned speech. And it turns out that he actually gave the eulogy to one of the firemen who died from uh, first responder-related medical complications. He ended up giving the eulogy at that man's um, at that man's funeral because he had grown so personally close with this firefighter, um, and the the collected firefighters in that uh, in that uh, firehouse wanted to do something to give back to John Stewart, and uh, they caught it on video. Check this out. I don't deserve this, um, do. but I will treasure it like I treasured Ray and our friendship. Mm. I joined the volunteer fire department in May of 1987. Pause. No one's ever been more from the East Coast than this man. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you did this as an if you were an actor, like if Tom Hardy did this accent, and, and you'd be like, dude, scale it back a little. Pull it back Let's a go. little. But uh, he, uh, so for those of you watching uh, or listening on audio only, um, this is a uh, captain of fire department and he had worked with this man ray who had passed away that was john stewart's friend and they're about to present john with this with this gift the volunteer fire department taught me brotherhood it gave me a mission in life and i made the greatest friends that i've ever met in that fire department in that company that i joined in east meadow east meadow engine three ray pfeiffer was an ex-captain Ray joined the East Meadow Fire Department in 1978. To this day, he is still the youngest captain in the East Meadow Fire Department. Ray Pfeiffer also was inspired by his time in the East Meadow Fire Department and joined the New York City Fire Department in 1987. Yesterday, at the Pfeiffer golf outing, Joe's, Ray's brother Joe decided to give Ray's bunker coat as an auction item. John Field paid handsomely for this yesterday and outbid three other people to see to it that he took possession of this coat. I believe everybody here today in this hallway has learned brotherhood and camaraderie because we all have one mission. John wanted John Stewart to have this. A couple of us have signed it. And like I said, John made it his mission to outbid three other people yesterday and see to it that John Stewart had Ray's East Metal Fire Department bunker coat. So we appreciate your, uh, your help, John. And uh, this comes from John, and this comes from everybody in this hallway. How, do you know his connection? Uh, John Stewart? Yeah. John Stewart, um, prior to there really being a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm tiring up here, as John Stewart was when he was uh, accepting this, John Stewart had been one of the very first um, celebrity advocates for first responders prior to people really, for, by and large, realizing that there was some... For health care for them. Health care, yeah. um, uh, further funds to take care of them and their family for the ones who had died, for the ones who were ending up with serious illness, sometimes fatal illness, from dealing with the gas and the exposure that uh, of Ground Zero. And he um, just took it upon himself, being a New Yorker, filming in The Daily Show there for, for however many years, um, took it upon himself to, to be their advocate, going as far to uh, speak at this man Ray's funeral at, at, at the eulogy, and then also go to Congress in a, in a now famous video where he essentially... He dressed him down. I mean, he, 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 he talked shit to the <laughs> Congress, saying... How dare you leave these these people high and dry? Um, so uh, after this man passed away, the the fire department um, decided it was only fitting to give John Stewart the, his bunker coat, you know, his fireman's coat, 
and uh, John Stewart in receiving it, just you could see he 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 lost control, was totally emotional, and I, I thought that was a, a really beautiful beautiful moment. Uh, there's a woman who surprised a teenager that walked 21 miles to work. For a second, I thought you said 21 miles. I know Kevin, you're you're prone to making those <laughs> miscues. You 21. Yes, 21. Dude. A teenager in Georgia will no longer have to walk 21 miles after school. Uh, he would walk from school. Wait, uh, you know a marathon's like 24 miles? Yes. Okay, that's un- this is fucking crazy. Are we? Yes. Okay. Yes. So he would walk 21 miles from school to work to home. He would get home at about midnight, and he would be back up the next day and at school. And he never complained. He said, I knew if I had to walk to work every day... So that I could save up for a car, that's what I was going to do. You know how everyone's parents say, oh, you don't understand. I had to walk through the snow. Yes. My mom always is like, I had to walk through it. My mom grew up in East L.A., but somehow walked through the snow. <laughs> do you know, like, this kid actually was that. Like, he's going to yeah. grow up and be a parent and be like, you know, 21 miles I yep. walked. He'd leave 3 p.m., he would walk to his job at a restaurant, and then he would walk home. Let's watch the video. He is the man who has gained national attention after a Detroit Free Press article shed light on his need for transportation. Well, James Robertson has been walking 21 miles to work and never, ever missed a day on the job. A GoFundMe page started by a stranger with the goal of raising just $5,000 to get him a car, now topping $312,000. Uh, can you hold it there? Today. By the way, um... That's, that's a running theme. People start a GoFundMe. They, in this case, they wanted $5,000. People gave $312,000. It will end up being 600% yes. of what you ask for. Yeah. And all of those people um, that donate, raised by 11,964 people in five days, all of those people have a part of this story that's beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Let's $312,000. Continue. Yep. Even more generosity. 7 Action News reporter Anu Prakash shows us how James received the surprise of a lifetime. This was all a huge surprise. Mr. Robertson was brought here to Suburban Ford to just look at some cars, but when he got inside, he got quite the shock. My name is David Fisher. Welcome to Suburban Ford of Sterling Heights. My dad and I are the proud owners of the Suburban Collection, and we've been uh, truly uh, inspired by your story. And uh, we wanted to give you a little uh, little thank you gift. And just like that, James Robertson's life took a new turn. <laughs> the Detroiter, whose incredible story of walking 21 miles to and from work for the last decade, now has a new ride. I don't like it. I love it. A brand new Burgundy Ford Taurus, the car Robertson had been dreaming about. Really? You guys don't do, please get the camera to go. You guys don't, don't, don't do that. You're going to make me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> An emotional moment for a man whose spirit and story won the hearts of so many. A GoFundMe page started by Wayne State student Evan Leedy now stands at more than $300,000. Evan says people from 11 countries have left messages of support on that site for Mr. Robertson. Very emotional. Um, it's exciting. It's really exciting to see. I'm glad that we could get James the car of his dreams exactly what he wanted and cool. Blake Pollock is the UBS banker who got to know Robertson last year after driving by him and giving him rides when the weather was bad. Just a few days ago, Pollock made some calls and within moments, David Fisher Jr. of Suburban Ford and Sterling Heights was all in. Pollock says he joked with Robertson that now he's the one who's going to want to ride. I told him that, you know, when he gets this car, I'm selling mine and, you know, he, he, I'm his responsibility now. Um, but, uh, you know, really, I, I just, I'm glad he's going to have the independence that a car provides. We took care of all the uh, paperwork and, you know, we'll make sure uh, all, all the taxes. So James is truly getting a free car. After seeing this incredible moment, James Robertson went to work. Since he hasn't driven in a while, a dealership employee drove him there. Come Monday, Robertson says he'll be the one in the driver's seat. New car, new way of getting to work, but still the same guy. Deep down inside, you know, I get all this now, but I'm still the same man that uh, I've always been. In Sterling Heights, a new Prakash, 7 Action News. I'm not going to work on that day. No. He gets I just got ride. a car. Yeah. Go try the whip. Hey, um, work? Go straight the whip. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it today. Sorry. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to work. I hate. <laughs> I hate to poo poo this story. No, you, I don't think you do. I can, though. $312,000 and they bought him a Taurus. 
that's the car he always wanted. I mean, I don't expect him to spend all. Th- I don't expect like a new uh, a new Lamborghini, a Murcielago or anything. But maybe like an Audi A7, like a hundred thousand dollar car. Right? We're talking three hundred twelve grand. <laughs> yes. But don't you think that that man doesn't care what car? Absolutely. Like, that's the car he wanted. That's the car he got. Absolutely. If he's going to use that money for anything By else. By the way, good car. Yeah. You know, if you, uh, J.D. Power and Associate, the new Ford Taurus, good car. All I'm saying is where does the $256,000 go? Because that's a, what, $45,000, $50,000 car? I don't have that I'm information saying, in front I'm of I'm just saying All right. maybe an M5. <laughs> Would it kill you? I was pulling this story and my daughter got done with Zoom school and came out and went, Papa, what is wrong? Because I was crying. Not crying a little like you've seen me do. I mean, boogers and, nice. and schmutz, okay? A man is dying. He is 96 years old, so it's not all that sad. He's had a darn good run. The thing that's special about this man is that he served in World War II. Wow. Proudly, he was a World War II hero. He received the Purple Heart for being stabbed with a bayonet and getting shot three times. Stabbed with a bayonet? His wife had passed away. He did have his his grandkids and everything that were around him, but he was in hospice care. He was coming towards the end, and he told his hospice nurse, I have one request. I just want to, before I go, spend some time with someone who shared the battlefield with me. Oh, wow. Now, this is a 96-year-old man who was in World War II. Ain't that easy to come by, people who shared the battlefield with you. Well, they would have had to be, what, 20, 21, 22 in 1940. So, yeah. so that's I mean, really... They, they, had to, they had to have been drafted right at 18 yes. in, in the beginning of the war. So um, this nurse went to Twitter, and for once, social media was good for something besides shitting on people and talking crap and get, being politically divisive. She went to Twitter... And this is what happened. I'm going to have to do a little bit of narration because both these men in this clip are very old and they're not easy to understand. So for those of you listening in the podcast, I'm going to try to give you what they're saying. But check this out. Despite the brutality and loss of World War II, one veteran finds solace in a powerful meeting of hearts and minds. The last wish of a dying Marine was to share his memories with a comrade in arms. Gary Tuckman reports on how that wish was granted through social media. A World War II Marine veteran shot three times and bayoneted in the Battle of Guadalcanal, a Purple Heart recipient. This is Sergeant Bill Hessian today. How old are you? 96. 96. And when do you turn 97? When's your birthday? (laughs) May 70th. That's coming up. Yeah. Sadly, Sergeant Hessian's health is failing, and he's now receiving hospice care. And it turns out that long-ago battle on the Solomon Islands has flooded Sergeant Hessian's memory of late. So much so, his hospice caregivers decided to do something about it. Do your thing, Twitter. A hospice facility in New York is seeking someone willing, able, to visit with a veteran patient, age 96, who is in the Battle of Guadalcanal. The patient is fixated on talking to someone that has the specific shared experience. And Twitter did its thing. We found Harold Berg in Peoria, Illinois, also a former World War II Marine sergeant, also the recipient of a Purple Heart, and also at the Battle of Guadalcanal. Without hesitation, Harold Berg and a family friend hopped a plane to New York City and headed to the Rockland County, New York home Bill Hessian shares with his daughter and her family to fulfill this last wish. Harold Berg, this is Bill Hessian. You're both Marines, both at Guadalcanal, both. American oh, heroes. That golly, a leather neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were uh, on uh, what outfit were you in? A company. A, Com- a-, a- combat engineer. Combat yeah, engineer. Combat. By golly, I tell you, well, you're, you, you and I are just about the same age. I'm 96. You're 96, I'm 92. Uh, yeah, and I uh, still chase girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lied too. <laughs> With family and friends gathered around them, the men shared stories of their time during the war and spoke of their physical and emotional wounds that remain all these decades later. Well, boy, you're lucky to be here. Yeah. And it went right through there. Yeah. Bayonet went, went right through went his neck. Down through me. And then. I don't know why, because I had a hole in my back like this. 
He had a hole in his well, back the size of a silver good dollar. For you and I. Yeah. Huh? Right now, it ain't so good. Well, yeah, but look at it. Look, we had a lot of good days go by. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I lost my wife uh, two years ago. We were married uh, 71 years. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Sergeant Hessian is also a widower. He was married for 55 years. Well, what they got you doing now? You I'm living it? here with my daughter. Living with they his mow daughter. mow the grass and... Huh? You know, mow the grass. I can't even do that now. That's what they got me doing now, mowing <laughs> the grass. <Yeah. laughs> there I am right there. It took more than 75 years after these men shared a battlefield at Guadalcanal. <laughs> but Bill Hessian and Harold Berg are now friends. This is a coin I had uh, for uh, three. Oh. United States Marines. That's where you and I got our education. But when they said goodbye, they knew they likely would not see each other again. It's good to see a fellow Marine. I tell you, I enjoyed it. I want you to look right up, look in the camera. A last wish yeah. fulfilled. Gary Tuckman, CNN, New City, New York. Come on. That guy got bayoneted in the neck. And shot three times. He's not a good soldier. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask you. I'm just joking about the soldier thing. I'm, I'm, I'm crying a little bit, but I want to ask you. Do you feel sorry for them that they had to deal with the horrors of World War II or that they were married collectively for 125 years? Which one was more up. Which one was more trying for a man? Which one deteriorated their soul? It was, it's more? a toss-up. <laughs> but uh, I thought that that was a, that was a beautiful story. And... Um, it just makes you uh, realize, like, uh, generations past had it a whole lot tougher than we did, yeah, even no during kidding. the lockdown, you know? No kidding. All right, you got the outro? Sure. <laughs> outro. 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 It's an outro! That's what I'm talking about, bro! Yeah! So say hello to the happy goodbye to the blues, because Kevin and Mike, we fucked you up with great news! Woo! See you tomorrow. Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. Nice.